good evening my dear friends and good evening online viewers our today's topic is endocrine physiology and firstly i am thankful for doctors those who are attending my class dr lal singh dr mla dr manmohan dr sandhya dr santosh so many okay thanks my dear friends so our today's topic is endocrine physiology as we know uh anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary anterior pituitary we can say also adenohypophysis a4 anterior and a4 adenohypophysis how to learn the hormones how many they secrete so please my dear friends learn this trick pg fault postgraduate fault postgraduate fault so p represent here prolactin g represent here growth hormone f represent here follicular stimulating hormone a represent here adenocorticotropic releasing hormone l represent here luteinizing hormone and t represent here thyroid stimulating hormone so in examination how they ask they like to ask which hormone is not secreted by anterior pituitary so remember pg fault and eliminate the one okay then posterior pituitary its name is neurohypophysis o represent here oxytocin and adh anterior uh, anti diuretic hormone and it's also known as vasopressin only two hormones by posterior pituitary medial pituitary also there medial pituitary secrete melanostimulating hormone okay so first go for anterior pituitary hormones so uh, we are going to discuss about lh and fss so hyp hypothalamus pit pituitary gonadal axis lh and fsh we are going to learn hypothalamus secrete lh releasing hormone then it goes to anterior pituitary signal then it releases lh and fsh and these responsible goes for gonads and gonads releases testosterone as testosterone est estrogen and pros progesterone and after that they gives a signal to not produce excess amount of lhrh by hypothalamus because there is sufficient amount so my dear friends as we all know and we are going to read some pathology about this in our next coming videos this is the introduction of endocrinology how hormones are going to be work in our body and how they are secreted then second one is hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis h represent here hypothalamus releases thyroid releasing hormone and then it goes to anterior pituitary anterior pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone then it goes in uh, thyroid gland then thyroid gland secrete t3 and t4 and then it gives a signal do not to produce more amount of um, trh2 hypothalamus okay my dear friends so third one growth hormone axis um a uh, hypothalamus it releases gh uh, releasing hormone then it goes to anterior pituitary anterior pituitary release growth hormone growth hormone work on two ways first on liver in liver it releases igf1 igf means insulin like growth factor 1 which acts on target organ also here somatostatin inhibitory mechanism for this to produce growth hormone okay my dear friend here also the same concept if uh, uh, igf1 is more then it uh, gives a signal for hypothalamus not to produce more amount of gnrh ghrh okay my dear friends if growth hormone is increases it causes the hypoglycemia why my dear friends because it is secreted insulin like growth factor 1 okay then hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis hypothalamus release corticotropin releasing hormone then it goes in anterior pituitary anterior pituitary it goes to secrete acth adrenocorticotrophic releasing hormone then it act on adrenal adrenal secrete cortisol and cortisol secretes msh melanocyte stimulating hormone this is a cycle my dear friends you have to learn you have to learn and we are going to discuss some pathologies about uh, these also like addison disease addison disease about this but i am going to explain in another topic okay 
then prolactin axis hypothalamus uh, there goes for prolactin releasing factor ssri and tca tricyclic antidepressant increases the prolactin releasing factor okay then it goes in anterior pituitary and releases the prolactin positive manner and prolactin responsible for yes dr lal singh milk milk yes it releases the milk he is very uh, right perfect produce the milk and dopamine also but dopamine act on inhibit reaction for prolactin so dopamine increases in bird disease as we know schizophrenia in that we use antipsychotic so antipsychotic increases the prolactin level and decreases the dopamine level and dopamine ag antagonist they are Mm-hmm. antipsychotics and dopamine agonist also inhibit the prolactin prolactin increases in hypothyroidism also very good information hypothyroidism dopamine increases so our next topic this is all about the anterior pituitary my dear friends as i want to explain you again so keep it fast and revise very brilliantly revise very fast okay firstly we have to learn thyroid if we think about thyroid so think hypothalamus hypothalamus weight you know my dear friends how much decrease hypothalamus weight how much hypothalamus weight in grams or in milligrams how much how much yeah. uh, how much weight 4 grams only 4 grams my dear friend hypothalamus weight is 4 grams only 4 grams like a piece of our nail so think i will teach you quickly and fastly hypothalamus think hypothalamus uh, we are going to now uh, learn about hypothalamus uh, pituitary uh, thyroid uh, axis releasing axis hypothalamus that pituitary gland uh, so firstly hypothalamus it releases thyroid releasing hormone then the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary releases the thyroid hormone then thyroid hormone till thyroid gland thyroid gland release t3 and t4 and then it goes in formation for hypothalamus not to release uh, more thyroid releasing hormone then again again my dear friends we are going to hypo uh, learn about hypothalamus gonadotrophin anterior pituitary uh, gonadal axis gonadal axis we know hypothalamus then hypothalamus uh, releases the uh, luteinizing releasing lh uh, releasing hormone then goes to anterior pituitary and here the anterior pituitary secretes what anterior pituitary finally secretes uh, my dear friends uh, lh and fsh then lh fsh goes on gonads gonads releases the testosterone estrogen and progesterone and then if in insufficient amount they provide a information signal for hypothalamus not to secrete more okay my dear friends and again prolactin axis we know uh, prolactin hypothalamus then prolactin releasing factor and dopamine prolactin releasing factor increases by ssri selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or by tca tricyclic antidepressant so it helps for anterior pituitary and release the prolactin but here the dopamine dopamine inhibit the prolactin level prolactin level decreases but in dopamine uh we know prolactin helps in release of uh, oxid uh, milk yeah uh, so another one then uh, now we are going to study about uh, adrenocorticotropic releasing uh, hormones like uh, hypothalamus pituitary uh, corticotropic releasing axis now hypothalamus uh, then called ch releasing hormone then anterior pituitary anterior pituitary releases Uh, the ACTH, then ACTH uh, acts on uh, uh, cortisol, uh, cortisol, and it uh, uh, releases the MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, which I explained here already. So, uh, and another axis also remains. So, my dear friends, please try to understand in this manner, and you have all can also learn. So, second R question, yeah, in uh, first uh, pituitary axis, hypothalamus, posterior pituitary. oxytocin oxytocin uh, by suckling or by uterine distension oxytocin increases so in breast in breast uh, it uh, causes the release of milk sorry my dear friends uh, prolactin produce p for prolactin p for produce milk but here uh, 
uh, its release of milk, release of milk by sucking of a baby during that time, a mother when feed a child. Okay. In uterine, it causes the uterine contraction. In cervix, it causes uterine dilatation and psychiatric effects. So, my dear friends, I know it's uh, coming under Sinto. The brand name is Sinto. We can say Sinto, I hope. And uh, we are going to use uh, to for induction of labor also sometimes uh, earlier than labor some hours because it causes uterine uh, contraction and cervix dilatation, which uh, make uh, easy uh, for uh, delivery of a baby in first labor earlier than first labor. Okay. Second one is hypothalamus posterior pituitary and antidiuretic hormone ADH it's another name is vasopressin my dear friends we are going to use some antidiuretic hormone uh, when a child uh, more than six years going to um, pee urine nocturia or maybe some adult male maybe some elderly male or elderly female uh, they do not have control the urine secretion so antidiuretic hormone we are going in some another condition also we are going to use like hypotension hypotension antidiuretic hormone we use and diuretic you know for us amylasic anemia yeah? we are going to use when there is hypertension and we want more output of urine so adh adh in kidney it increases aquaporphyrin increase absorption of water and increase peripheral vascular resistance also my dear friends and uh, in case of hypotension in case of shock we can use sometimes sometimes not in all ways uh, but it uh, some cases increase atrial pressure increase oncotic pressure and atrial natri uretic peptide what they done they increase the pressure and they give a signal already for ADH to treat less so my dear friends, that's all. It's not a hard, difficult task, but definitely in endocrine physiology, you are going to get one question from this. So thank you, my dear friends. Thank you, my online viewers. You, If you like my video, please put subscribe and put like on my video. And if you have any question, you can uh, put comment on it and I will answer. That's all. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you. That's all. Goodbye.